Guide Us TV, watched by many, loved by all. New Muslims, young Muslims, born Muslims, non-Muslims, all enjoy it. Guide Us TV, never ads, always free. Let's keep it free, no ads. Support and share. And get guided with Guide Us TV. Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa partners and you can be my Dawa partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to dawapartners.com, sign up and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our Dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming Dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. live from our studios in Los Angeles, uh, California, and uh, we're so delighted to be with you tonight, and uh, we're the, the Muslim Medicine Show, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Dr. Sultan and myself, Adil, uh, Dr. Adil, and uh, we're uh, basically very excited to bring you all up to date, whether COVID or non-COVID related issues, uh, this is the hub for your information to bring it up to date that is referenced, that is credible, that is um, a very transparent. And uh, we want nothing but the best of your health, uh, both physical and mental. And with that, we're gonna start off with uh, Dr. Sultan. Salaamu Alaikum, Dr. Sultan. Wa Alaikum Salaam, Rahmatullah Barakatahu. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, uh, we're, it's a new day. we're students of Sheikh Yusuf, you know. It's a, it's a new day. <laughs> And you hope at the end of the show we'll give you a star. Fantastic <laughs> star. <laughs> Sheikh Yusuf, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm All gonna, right. yeah, okay, there I made it. I got, I got on the air. So, uh, we had, uh, we transferred, we're up in San Bernardino, California right now, and I'm visiting here, and so uh, I fried the computer. A, a little while ago, and that's why we were delayed. But anyway, we're we're okay now. I I got this hooked up a different way, and uh, yeah. And by the way, this is this is real right here. Okay, this is not <laughs> green screen tonight. All right. Anyway, so uh, first of all, I wanted to mention that uh, in response to our program last night. We had some folks who took uh, took offense, and uh, they said uh, uh, it said uh, it, somebody put it, posted this. It says the FDA has not approved any vaccine, and some doctors have advised the public not to take it. What is the Islamic point of view? And uh, doctors, I'll flip it over to you guys. Okay. Okay, I uh, this uh, is an, like an outdated discussion already. 
uh, the the Tukla Council of North America uh, issued, uh, you know, uh, when people were asking about the social distancing, the mask and the importance and all that, way, way, way back in February 2020. We were already in August 2021. So that's like a pretty much, uh, you know, a conversation that's been discussed, been resolved. And, um, you know, the issues is set in terms of Yes, um, um, uh, there is uh, evidence of do no harm and don't harm others uh, by taking the vaccine for yourself and don't harm others by preventing uh, the spread of uh, you know the virus and so on, especially uh, now that we're confronting with new versions and more transmissible and more infectious. As a matter of fact, the, um, the, uh, I wanted to share something that came very appropriate because uh, the mass, uh, massive confusion of uh, what to do and so on. Uh, this is issued by the American as a, uh, Association of Neurology. Uh, was have a formal position statement on COVID-19 uh, vaccine. It, it, the bottom line is vaccine benefits outweigh the risk of both vaccination complications. So, you know, everything in medicine is about risk benefit ratio. If the benefit is more than the risk, then all by all means go for it. If the risks are more, then you abstain from, from whatever that uh, uh, treatment or intervention is because uh, there is a basic principle in medicine of do no harm. And in Islam, la darara wa la darara. you know, there is no um, harm that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you know, the harm to you or to anybody. And for that matter, we just wanted to give you the evidence based that that pretty much go along with the, with the Islam and Islamic principles. And we, we already said that the, the Muslims are the first in the world, or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi was the first in the world to establish the principles quarantine. Uh, nobody moves in and out of the area where uh, there's pandemic or uh, plague uh, and the whole world adapting these you know policies up till now. So there is no um, you know room to go backwards. It's only forward. And um, I just mentioned that the, uh, this is the American Society of Neurology said the, the evidence of benefit outweighed the risk. Uh, and this is a long position paper uh, that vaccines benefit outweigh the risk. And thus, we should all go along with it, not alone, but along with other measures like the, you know, the, you know, continue to have the mask on, continue to have uh, social distancing and all the other uh, measures to promote the hand hygiene, to promote the, uh, the immune health, because this stuff is not going away. We've seen uh, the, the the whole map of the United States is red, fiery red, and it's like uh, almost uh, on fire from the, from the spread of uh, of this uh, Delta virus. Now that is uh, you know that is really um, it's like a, almost a, a whole new disease if you if you if you would in terms of its transmissibility and infectiousness. And there's other uh, uh, variants coming down the road, Lambda and so on, after Delta, 1,000 cases already been diagnosed in the U.S. So a lot of things in motion, a lot of, a lot of the, you know, uh, uh, things are moving. Uh, and that's why we have to also move and to be ahead of the virus, not behind the virus. And that's why this conversation is irrelevant at this point in time. Well, uh, I understand our point of view, but... Uh... What I was trying to do is to help some of the people that are posting these comments right now because uh, they are really doing some damage, not only to their own credibility, of course, don't be dumb, but at the same time, they're damaging uh, human beings. They're, they're hurting people by putting this th same rhetoric up again and again and again. Let, let me read this uh, uh, again, and for those who just tuned in, somebody posted this last night, and uh, it, it, this was the nicest one, all right? Because we got uh, several that, well, we get hundreds, so that's it's fair that we should get a, a couple of uh, opposing opinions, all right? It said the FDA has not approved any vaccine and doctors are advising the public not to take it. What is the Islamic point of view? Now, what I posted, and I, I stand to be corrected, if, if uh, you doctors would like to, uh, you know, give me some advice on this. What I said was, Salam Alaikum, and the person used the name Ace. Uh, Salam Alaikum Ace, peace be upon you. And thank you for your comment. Actually, the Islamic 
view of any topic is to start with reality and verify everything before you come to a conclusion. Also, trusting in those who have proven to be trustworthy and not putting a lot of stock in something or someone who is not yet proven to be 100% accurate. Based on that, the reports I have read over the last year and a half on a daily basis, I can tell you with confidence. You have some good points. However, the choice is between getting a set of two free vaccines, and Pfizer, by the way, is 95% effective, okay, in testing and has remained at that category for the last 18 months. So, or using something the FDA has approved. And uh, if I say it out loud, the, the, the uh, people that run Facebook will take us off the air, and so will YouTube. So I, I won't say it, but you can go to our comments and read it for yourself. I put a three where an E goes so I could put it up. But anyway, uh, and I mentioned all of this in there that, that they would take it down. So that's why I used a three in, in, in the spelling of Iver. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the third option is not to be protected at all. And two of my close family members held the opinion that this was all a conspiracy and they opted not to take the vaccines. Although they were there, they were available, they could have done it, they qualified and everything in the beginning. They got the virus and they did not survive. They both died. And a friend of mine a dear friend of mine, his whole family got the virus and it was so serious that he, uh, he said he wished that he would die. That's how bad it was. And his father did pass away. Now, uh, guys, this is not a joke. This is not something to play with. If you really believe that this is uh, something that's a conspiracy, blah, 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 Please go back to your cave or wherever you came out of and stay there, all right? Nobody's forcing you to do anything, but please let the other people make their choice for themselves based on facts, based on reality, not based on something that is twisted. It, it, believe it or not, this is not the opinion of the doctors. This is not ever was the opinion of the doctors. There were a couple of doctors in the very beginning who said they didn't know what it was all about and they thought that this was blah, blah, blah. And uh, one of them actually passed away from it, but that's irrelevant, okay? So based on what I just shared with you, what do you think the Islamic opinion would be? And this is what I posted. I said, you're smart enough to read, type, and use a computer. Decide for yourself and don't make yourself look less than intelligent on the internet. Get guided with guideus.app and have a nice day. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sultan, would you like to comment on this? Uh, or No, I mean, both of you have done such a fantastic job of putting the truth up, up front that uh, and you did it uh, so clearly no unambiguous way that vaccines save life and uh, our first of all our moral obligation as muslim from our all of our behaviors is not to hurt anybody you see that's point number one and point number two we shouldn't be getting hurt by other other people also so putting uh, this litmus test, what I can say is that the, all the evidence we have is that the benefits outweigh all the, the minor uh, side effects or, you know, some people, uh, uh, one person dying or, you know, something of that sort, you know, which is uh, absolutely uh, 
millions of years, we're talking 8.5 million people got in a few, you know, had the uh, serious side effects, which is absolutely outweighs the benefits, uh, uh, benefits outweigh the uh, risks that we have associated with. So common sense approach says that we should get vaccine. And patients ask me, this is, this is my opinion. I tell them, number one, I do not believe in forced uh, uh, any treatment. You see, people have choice. I knowingly <clears throat> got the vaccine. My wife, who is an infectious disease, she got the vaccine. My children and uh, all got, got the vaccine. My family all got, got the vaccine because we are strongly convinced that the benefit outweigh the the risks. Then after that, what happens? We just leave, uh, leave it to a uh, great uh, creator, Allah Ta'ala. But uh, that, that's the best decision I have made right now. If evidence comes, I may change my mind. I'm not uh, stuck with this opinion. But if uh, I don't see any evidence to the contrary, I have absolute moral obligation, not only as a physician, not only and as a Muslim, not only to follow uh, follow the guideline, but also inform the fellow uh, beings that they should also follow the vaccine. So um, I just have one basic question. Those people who have any hesitation about the vaccine. My question is, what is your hesitation, number one? And number two, what evidence do you have to hold on to that hesitation? Opinion is one thing, everyone has their own opinion. But I want to know from the scientific point of view, what hesitation you have, then I can see if I can clearly explain your hesitation and, uh, and point out if it is realistic or it's not uh, real, realistic. But by and large, it is saving lives, and I cannot say anything other than that take the vaccination unless you are allergic to it or you have a, a serious allergic reaction to the first dose. Then you may not uh, take the second dose. But before trying the first dose, just being hesitant without any logic and reason, honestly, I don't believe that uh, that is sound, which is good for you and also uh, good for your uh, fellow being and your family and friends. Okay. I'll add to, to Dr. Sultan that none of those vaccines are used uh, uh, unless they've been authorized by FDA. So whatever that uh, brother gentleman uh, who wrote that, that's that's incorrect statement. FDA did approve uh, the use of, uh, in the United States, uh, at least uh, the um, uh, Pfizer and Moderna and later uh, I had J&J, uh, &J, but uh, paused for a while. Uh, and this is under the emergency use authorization. So EUA, um, that was done last year, um, you know, when first came out um, and, and has been used under the emergency use authorization since then. And we're just sharing the data um, that's been out for a long time now um, that we know. Um, and uh, we, that's how we base our decisions on, uh, on management and further uh, protection of, uh, of patients uh, because the, this stuff is gonna linger for a while. Okay, um, I, I'd like to introduce a, a, a question now and see how we could uh, move forward with this. Is it true that doctors have been advising their different patients that if they do have something that would have a reaction like blood clotting and uh, which we heard about yesterday and uh, reactions uh, maybe that they are you know very uh, like diabetes or something like this that they uh, isn't it true that if you go to your doctor that they will give you the right advice if they know what uh, what you have? Absolutely. I, I believe uh, that uh, your first line 
um, of uh, defense to go to is your you know old local doctor uh, to report uh, number one if there's any adverse side effects, uh, the extent of which and so on, because these have to be reported into the uh, safety and monitoring committee of those uh, uh, administering the, uh, the vaccines. Um, uh, and then what to do about it, that, that's the second uh, second stage. Like if somebody had a serious reaction from the first dose, okay, stop right there. Uh, we're not going to proceed to the second one. And this happened to a few people that, I, that I've seen and saw on and I recommended not to go because the, 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 there were enough concerns initially and symptoms uh, lingered for a while. So that was, uh, that was a, a reasoning for it. Uh, but unless and until it, it's managed by knowledgeable people in a very transparent way um, and, and, a, and a, in a very uh, you know, step-wise uh, fashion, uh, that will guarantee number one, the safety of patients, number two, uh, the, um, uh, basically the, the safety of the community uh, by getting enough people vaccinated to prevent further spread or further uh, development of new variants like the like we're seeing now with Delta and so on, uh, to really get get to the you know the immunity to the good level to give everybody the, the safety that we all need, and because of this um, you know uh, back and forth uh, really useless discussions, um, it's it's harming everybody. It's putting us back almost uh, you know a year back backwards, not forwards, and it's diluting all the efforts that's been done so far. Let's all get on you know on the same wavelength on the talking the same language delivering the same message and avoid confusion and hopefully help people to alleviate their uh concerns but also address them in the proper way and yeah, you right. see the uh, what cdc is saying that people i'm talking about the contraindication that people who had an allergic reaction immediate allergic reaction they may not take the second shot, but they must consult their own physician and based on their symptoms, let the physician determine that it was an actual allergic reaction because reaction to vaccination or any injection, it can be a sensitivity reaction or a more common reaction, which quote unquote uh, to the uh, un, uh, 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 uninformed may appear to be an allergic reaction is vasovagal reaction, which means reaction to the pain, whether it's injection or whatever way, the patient may feel weak, blood pressure may drop, may feel pale for a little while, uh, and laying down uh, for um, uh, a few minutes, patient comes back. Phone call coming up. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take that phone call. Uh, all right, well, I'm sorry we missed the phone call. Uh, you can call us back right now and uh, we will take your call. I didn't want to interrupt the doctor while he was talking, but uh, if you'd like to call back again and, and let us uh, discuss or talk about whatever you'd like, okay? Uh, 1 800 right. 714383. All right, let's accept the call. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Do you have a question for the doctors tonight? Yes, I do. Um, and it's one of those things that, you know, years ago they were talking about aspirin in regards to uh, helping with blood clots. And I'm just wondering with uh, the vaccine that may cause blood clots, if you take aspirin, you know, the 81 milligram uh, over a period of time, would that help to prevent the blood clots? Very that's nice. A, that's Very a nice. good question. Let's, Very nice uh, question. Yeah, um, let, let, uh, me, uh, 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 let me have a chance to try to, uh, I've got one hand here and uh, yeah. It, it's really hard to do this tonight. Uh, okay, there you're back on the air. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so there's two components of blood clots. One is called platelets. That uh, that you know when you have like a shaving accident, what makes you stop from bleeding? The the blood you know platelets will come and aggregate and kind of stop the bleeding site. Otherwise, you bleed to death, even from small you know cuts and so on. The other part is called thrombin. 
or that that's a, another component of the blood clot and that's why the you know people have uh, strokes or heart attacks with the you know they due to blood clot the uh, part of it is a, a club buster uh, medication that will help to get rid of the thrombin but not the platelets now the aspirin is a good for the platelets component but the protocol that is used right now for a covid patient they're in icu that they will have the new oral anticoagulants, uh, something like Eliquis. I'm sure you see it all on TV commercials. Because the blood clots uh, that that uh, the, you know that are formed mostly in the lung, but also can shower in different parts of the body, in the heart, in the kidney, and and in the brain, causing strokes and kidney failure and and respiratory problems, and even inflammation of the heart muscle. All that. Uh, could be ameliorated, not not 100% resolved with the blood thinner, uh, with the oral anticoagulant, not the aspirin. Aspirin is not strong enough, uh, but this will be like uh, you know the the higher level, which is called Eliquis uh, or similar. You know, um, you know uh, they they have other um, you know Zeralto and Perdaxa out there on the market that they'll do the same thing, but the lowest incidence of bleeding. Uh, and it will give you the protection from the blood clots is eloquence. So that's, you know, if somebody have proven COVID uh, related like admission, hospital, uh, hospitalization, they will continue with eloquence even a, a month after uh, discharge because of this propensity to form blood clots. Now, this is in contradistinction for the someone who have established heart disease or um, hardening of the arteries, uh, the antiplatelet therapy on chronic basis like and uh, like aspirin on a low dose will inhibit the platelets aggregation and prevent blood clots from forming on you know a, like a, a chronic prevention basis so and if somebody have acute heart attack they will give him two baby aspirin to chew because you don't want the platelets to aggregate and make the clot bigger but remember two components of the blood clot platelets and thrombin the aspirin hits on the platelets, but it does not affect the thrombin. Then the, the direct, you know, uh, blood uh, thinner helps uh, helps uh, mostly the the, uh, the thrombin component, and that prevents uh, the uh, devastating complications of of showering blood clots, uh, you know, that happen and witnessed uh, and observed with uh, with COVID. I hope that answers the question. Uh, doctor, I, I would like to add, add uh, some uh, part of a question to this. Uh, now, you mentioned Eliquis, and I have heard of that, but I didn't even know what it was. Uh, there is something that I just uh, uh, experienced by going to the internet while you were talking, and it says Warfane. Warfarin. Could you talk Warfarin, about Yeah, Warfarin is called rat poison. <laughs> I'm sure you heard about that from, you know, oh, that's the oldest, oh. the oldest known blood thinner. Uh, but we used to have a lot of complications uh, with, uh, with Warfarin uh, because, uh, you know, people either their blood is too thin or too thick. Too thin, they bleed. Too thick, they will stroke out. And uh, then, you know, it's very difficult to adjust this and that. Then about uh, 15 years, 20 years uh, ago, there was a, a global, um, you know, body that came and regulate, you know, the way that we interpret the test of how thin the blood is. So if you're in California, it'll be the same uh, red in New York, the same in, in, in Hong Kong or in, in China or Australia. It's called INR, International Randomized Ratio. And based on different disease entities, will have to make sure that the Coumadin level stays within the therapeutic range of this specified INR value, uh, you know. And then uh, later, uh, you know, a few years back, uh, we started to have this new generation of oral anticoagulants, which you do not have to have all this frequent testing, you know, about uh, how thin the blood is and so on and adjust the dose and you don't have to go up and down and all the uh, instability of the blood thinning and its complications, whether a bleed or stroke. Uh, and another advantage with the Coumadin or the rat poison, you know, that you mentioned warfarin, you cannot eat green leafy vegetables. So a lot of people have been deprived from a duck. I can't have salad, my salad, because, you know, green leafy vegetables have something called vitamin K. 
that counteracts warfarin. You know, so vitamin K is like lead to more uh, on the uh, promote clotting factors, and and you're trying to thin the blood, so they, they they contradict each other. So, but with the new generation of blood thinners like Eliquis, Bridaxa, and Zeralto, uh, those are the three most common on the market used right now. They will, you know, you you know, you don't have to have the frequent testing. You do it only once. If someone uh, will adjust the dose to reduce dose, if someone older than 75 years of age or have renal insufficiency or kidney problem, then you cut down the dose. But you don't have to have this, you know, once a month or once a week or you know, with the, with the warfarin, it used to be really, you know, very very. Um, cumbersome and very, very, you know, problem problematic, and people bleed in their brain and 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 their stomach and 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 very messy. Uh, but with these new uh, indications, uh, warfarin has been ninety percent replaced with uh, you know, especially the most common rhythm that needs warfarin is atrial fibrillation, and we'll probably have a discussion on that on one of the shows. Uh, which was the most common uh, rhythm disturbance of all that lead to blood clots and strokes. So now, if it's not related to heart valve problem, then you should go along with those Eliquis or Pradaxa or, um, you know, uh, uh, Zeralto as alternative. And that really have changed the life of millions of, of Americans around the globe because now they have improved quality of life. You don't have to have all those strips back and forth to, to check on the blood level and they can eat green leafy vegetables and they have protection you know that that's that's a very important uh, aspect okay now uh, speaking about the green leafy vegetables doctor i found something and i put it up while you were speaking uh i don't want people to think that, that you're the doctor that said this but but uh maybe you agree maybe not but dr fran burke MSRD, I don't know what that uh, clinical technician says, when it comes to blood thinners and foods rich in vitamin K, I tell patients the, uh, that it's the consistency of intake on a daily basis that's Im important. So uh, I think, uh, and it mentions kale, and it mentions spinach, and turnips, uh, collard greens, uh, Swiss chard, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Uh, what what is that uh, something that you would approve of, doctor? Yes, uh, all these are green leaf vegetables. Doc, I, I enjoy my salad every day. You know what? You take this medicine, it, it counteracts the, 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 the main uh, job of warfarin, a blood thinner, uh, because that's how warfarin you know, works. It blocks the vitamin K dependent uh, clotting factors. So you bring in vitamin K, then, then they both work against each other. So everybody who starts on Coumadin will let them know about this green leafy vegetables. But then the, the, uh, the beautiful thing about this new generation of blood thinners that is not vitamin K, um, you know, dependent. It works by a different mechanism. It, it's really made made things a lot easier for a lot so of folks. So what eloquence is the Excuse thing? It, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to remind you to have a break. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's time for a break. Oh, that, that's pretty you, good when the callers tell me when to go on a break. <laughs> and, and, ah. All right. Okay, hey, we're gonna. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. That's right. Uh, baby, you got it. Okay. So the idea is change us, guys. Change us, not Islam. We'll be right back right after this. Guide Us TV, watched by many, loved by all, new Muslims, young Muslims, born Muslims, non-Muslims, all enjoy it. Guide Us TV, never ads, always free. Let's keep it free, no ads. Support and share, and get guided with Guide Us TV.
Guide Us TV. This is Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want DAWA partners, and you can be my DAWA partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DAWAPartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a DAO partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. We're back on Guidus TV. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone around the globe. And uh, we're, we're back again uh, in the medical um, uh, show to really uh, help uh, answer questions, to help alleviate uh, concerns worries, uh, whether it's related to COVID or non-COVID question. And just before the break, we were talking with uh, Brother Habib about the, the difference between aspirin and Eliquis, for instance. And I hope now they work by two different mechanisms for, for different, uh, um, you know, uh, indications. And uh, we know now the, that atrial fibrillation, which is the most common rhythm abnormality that uh, lead to blood clots that will lead to strokes and the risk of strokes increased by eight times compared to those who don't have atrial fibrillation. So a lot of them, if they have atrial fibrillation uh, rhythm disturbance, if it's not related to a valve problem, then Eliquis will be one of the types of the blood thinner, the new blood thinner that's replaced old fashioned Coumadin in that, uh, or Warfarin in that, uh, or the rat poison and a lot of uh, patients can relate to that and, and that's really have made a huge, um, um, uh, um, you know, uh, difference in the quality of lives of, of so many millions of patients around the globe. And I, I hope, um, you know, now the green leafy vegetable, if somebody unfortunately um, have to take uh, the, uh, the rat poison or the Coumadin because uh, they have a valve problem or they have a mechanical valve uh, that they need to be on Coumadin, that is, that's unfortunately uh, a restriction that they have to live with. You're just saying rat poison. Uh, is that, you mean really rat poison? <laughs> it was found, in, you know, in that and then kind of, uh, you know, uh, evolved, but they found the, the therapeutic benefit. And uh, yes, if you can uh, look it up, uh, that's uh, <laughs> used to be used in the past for that purpose. Uh, but then they found the therapeutic benefit. Uh, you know, uh, benefit of it, uh, but its use is getting less and less uh, because it's very, very, very cumbersome. It's very difficult to adjust uh, the levels. Um, and, and uh, you know, the chances of bleeding, if this is not monitored, uh, they, they people can physically exsanguinate. They, they bleed to death. Uh, and and I, I warn people because, uh, you know, I had a, a recent patient that uh, came in with these INR. Usually it's between two to three, uh, depending on the indication for the blood thinning. But then this patient was left and he did not go for to check it for a month. And then his INR was nine and he was bleeding from every orifice. And uh, his blood level was down to nothing. He was uh, white as a piece of uh, white sheet of paper. Uh, and it was really, really messy, uh, you know. Uh, you know, and that's sim simply could be avoided, um, you know, uh, because he could have been switched to Eliquis way, way back. You know, he was left um, on this medicine. Nobody bothered to dis dis um, to, to stop it, you know, six months after he had a blood clot in his legs. You know, and we see this all the time. And it's really, really something that, um, you know, we encourage people. If somebody could be, you know, switched from warfarin to the, you know, Eliquis or, or the new generation of blood uh, thinners uh, to 
basically lower chance of bleeding and and help it give people better quality of life that they, they can eat green leaf vegetables and so on and they cut down on the trips that they have to go and, and do the blood drawn to check on the blood level you know all that is um, is is a great um, quality of, uh, improvement for life for patients I, I really do appreciate everything you're doing uh, doctor with us I, I should tell everybody that these doctors that are with us on a regular basis and the doctors who join us infrequently uh, such as Dr. Emily and uh, Dr. The, the others um, I, I, their names escape me right now but they all are doing this on a volunteer basis no one is being paid for this no one is getting any kickbacks from any drug companies or anything like that I know that I, they, they always tell me don't, you don't need to put anything up there but I put up the eloquence thing so people would know, like me, I, I wanted to know what it looked like. But we're not advertising any particular drugs, and we're not, uh, uh, obviously we're getting no compensation for any of this from any companies. This is one of the rules about Guidus TV. We do not accept any ads, promotional stuff, except for massage it, mosques, schools, Muslim okay. schools, and any of the charity work that we do. That is the only ones that we actually promote. I wanted to say that before we uh, go on further with the program tonight. Uh, doctor, uh, if you could tell us a, a little bit, a, a, just touch on the subject why it is important for us to go to our medical doctor, the one that we trust, even, uh, you know, like if you go to the masjid or you go to your church and you know a doctor there, at least ask them a simple question. Somebody you trust, ask them a question. And the people, and by the way, I want to say something here. The people that I have known of who have gotten this, disease that were not vaccinated and it, especially those who died did not consult any doctors at all they did not talk to any doctor they took stuff off the internet they took stuff from well <laughs> some of the places we're broadcasting right now and they, they accepted that instead of going to a medical doctor and uh, I remember that somebody said that uh, a, a lawyer who defends himself in court has a fool for a client. I wonder if that applies to doctors who don't go to other doctors. <laughs> I love it. I love the way you put things. Well, you just touched on a very central uh, core value, trust. And that's the basics of everything in life. In any in any uh, transaction, in any uh, relationship, in any uh, kind of um, you know uh, interaction with anyone, it's about the trust. Do you trust um, you know uh, who you're dealing with and so on? Do you trust the product? Do you trust the service? And now, when it comes to health, health is the most important commodity. If you would, if somebody will ask you, you know, uh, is it what do you want to do? Buy a card, uh, flat screen TV, um, um, you know, my phone. What is the most important thing? Most important thing is your health, and uh, COVID has proven that. Uh, no matter how much money or anything else that's out there, your health is your wealth. And to really get the the, the trust uh, from a source that will impact on your life. This this uh, you know uh, physician or uh, you know provider that that you deal with uh, cares about you, want the best um, you know of um, of uh, uh, for you in terms of your health and, and well being and so on and so forth. And uh, you know this is very important. It has to be genuine. It cannot be faked. And it has to be also you know coming from the heart to 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 really is the in, you know and a lot of studies have proven. If there is a trust between the patient and their doctor, that would reflect on improved health outcome, improved um, uh, compliance with intake of medication, compliance with lifestyle modification, get rid of bad habits, get rid of smoking, you know, uh, vaping, drinking, all that, 
and then really uh, intake of medications. Because, you know, if somebody's not comfortable or have a trust factor uh, with their with their care provider, that I think no matter how many sessions or how many, uh, you know, uh, encounters and this and that, as long uh, unless and until it's translated into action that will benefit the patient, then it's just a waste of time. So the bottom line is that even doctors need to go to other doctors and not try to diagnose themselves. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying for, for patients looking for, you know, uh, questions to answers and all that, there has, they will go to the trusted doctors or providers to help them navigate through this mass confusion with uh, so much information overload and people don't know what to do and uh, they're contradicting reports and that you need you need a source to go to go to that you trust and get the get the clear instruction get a clear vision on what to do that will help you and your life and your health that that's that's really the bottom line mashallah uh, dr sultan i see you that you're back with us again uh, I would like to ask you something, if you don't mind, uh, and that is about the, the subject that we're talking about right now. And I've heard you and Dr. Uh, Adol speak about things and fulfill, you know, like uh, maybe that you forgot something and he'll tell you this or he left something out, you'll share with him. And I noticed that you guys cooperate really good and, and aid each other. Is this true of most doctors that you know, uh, uh, Dr. Sultan? Okay, you're muted. I, I don't know if you knew that. You're I'm muted. muted. Yeah. Unmute. Yeah, unmute. Okay, I got it. Okay, I'm, I'm muted. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hey, you know. My lips move, but but you don't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Read my lips. <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute. We're not going into politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what he's saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yes, I think uh, physicians are cooperative uh, quite a bit uh, with each other, but there's also another perspective also because i may not agree with every physician and here is in this show there's something unique we bring it in here first of all dr adil is not uh, real i mean i can't speak with him but, but uh, uh, this is my impression but i'll talk about myself okay dr adil can talk about himself <laughs> my i am <laughs> i am not stuck in the uh, in the strict uh, sickness mode of treatment, like, you know, for every symptom, there's a drug. For sinus, you should take antihistamines. For your blood pressure, you should take blood pressure medication. For your depression, you should take antidepressant. I come in, in mental allergy, I come from a different perspective, but again, respecting all physicians and offering patients more than one option, which, you know, uh, for every symptom you take a drug, I just gave you a few examples. In, instead, or in addition to, we in a mental allergy also offer three word solution. And that is treat the cause. Why should you want to treat depression and antidepressants if you can find the cause for, uh, for depression? For example, one of the most common causes for depression, every physician knows a, a physical cause is low thyroid. So if patient has low thyroid, you should, as a psychiatrist, you should investigate if the patient has it, either you treat it or send to somebody who knows how to treat low thyroid and they treat the problem, depression will get better. Now, similarly, if somebody has, you know, let's say hypertension, I'm, I'm stepping on Dr. Uh, uh, Adil's uh, field, but mineral deficiencies, for example, magnesium deficiency in a certain percentage can lead to hypertension. If you can in, find the cause uh, for hypertension, let's say magnesium deficiency, and you treat it, and the blood pressure comes down, why you, you need the blood pressure medication? Similarly, allergies, sinuses, typically it is treated with antihistamines and nasal spray, which are steroids. You can 
treat, uh, find the underlying cause, which usually dust and mold allergy or food allergy or something like that. And you treat that patient, patient get better. So in that uh, uh, aspect, I respect all physicians, how the patient be treated, but at the same time, we in environmental medicine also offer the option of treating the underlying causes. And our environmental factor, nutritional, hormone, all those things, they affect both physical and mental well-being of the patient. So therefore, whether it is a mental symptomatology or physical symptomatology, we always go to look for the underlying causes. So in that perspective, we are different, but at the same time, our goals are the same. Patients should get better and should get, and get, get no harm. With medications, we know that there are a lot of harms associated. So uh, I invite, uh, invite my physician colleagues to have come and look from the uh, environmental perspective or from the perspective of treating underlying causes so that you can improve the outcome. All physicians are all about increasing the outcome. But there is one little problem which has developed, especially in the last 30, 40 years, is that the medicine has been really hijacked by the big pharma and the insurance companies. They dictate their physicians on their list what medication to use and what medication not to use. And the pro promotion is ongoing basis drug therapy, drug therapy, drug therapy, and this symptom, that drug, that symptom, that drug. So this has really contaminated the medical field. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that, but uh, it is uh, contaminated. So therefore, we want to bring forth the knowledge that in addition to drugs, yes, there's another way of treating the problem and treating the cause. And this is what I want to bring in this shows right in here the real issue that our patients are suffering. Although no, we are talking about COVID quite a bit, but you know, the in real life, the things that matter the most uh, to our listeners are people who have, for example, asthma. They're taking inhalers and stuff like that and treat their online cause. You know, the people suffering from migraine headaches, people suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome. You can find the underlying cause. People suffering from fibromyalgia, muscle ache, joint pains, and a lot of other chronic ailments, which, you know, it, it's, um, I mean, if you're going to get COVID, you know, get COVID, you know, I mean, uh, some people get COVID, but uh, far more uh, than uh, people suffering from COVID are suffering from chronic illness on one form of the other. And the major reason for that suffering is that they have been promoted to treat the symptom, uh, uh, drugs, uh, uh, to treat the symptoms uh, uh, with drugs when symptomatically. And they, they may have started with a small illness and over a period of time, again, iceberg is just in, keeps increasing. So in this uh, program, we want to bring up this subject also, which is the common good for overwhelming majority of people uh, who are uh, who are listening. And hopefully, you keep listening to us, and we will be bringing these issues as uh, the time passes by. And one of the things that we are, we want to to uh, our listeners to uh, address is give us a call. Say this is my health problem. This is, uh, I have headaches, I've got depression, I've got fibromyalgia, I've got chronic fatigue, I've got pain. So tell us what, what we can do to improve our quality of life. We can talk about lifestyle, we can talk about nutrition, we can talk about a lot of things in here which will uh, help most, uh, most people and uh, most of our audience. And by the way, I should mention that this program is free nobody's getting any money out of this thing so if you would like to call in call in when we're live on the air if you call in nobody's going to send you a bill but likely they will tell you that this is something if it's real serious they'll tell you go to your local doctor 
find out what where you are. If you're in Canada, obviously you, you won't go to Florida for Dr. Adel, you won't go to St. Louis for Dr. Sultan, and you sure won't come out here to California for me because I'm not even a doctor, but, but, but the thing is, you can pay a lot of money and still not get cured, or you can just leave the, the idea of going to any medical professional at all and take your chances. But if you're a Muslim, guys, pay attention. You are responsible for your body. Just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told one of his companions when he jumped off his camel and ran into the mosque, he said, no, no, wait, tie your camel. He said, I trust Allah. He said, tie your camel, then trust Allah. So guys, let's do that. Let's tie our camels and oh, we're, we're being told to go off the air. Uh, Beeb, uh, we ran out of time, but it's great to talk with you tonight. Thank you for calling in and uh, encourage everybody else to do the same thing. All right? And, and guys, yes. yeah, tell everybody, uh, stay tuned and stay guided with Guide Us TV. TV. Guide Us TV. <laughs> yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. It's Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa partners, and you can be my Dawa partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to dawapartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our Dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming Dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click.